What's up guys, David Land here bringing you my second official video in NASCAR Heat 2. We are taking a look at another new track to this franchise, Iowa Speedway, in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. You can also run this track with trucks, but uh, for this race I wanted to show off the Xfinity Series. Now we're doing another stage race, but unlike most sport, I've decided to move the uh, percentage of the race that we're actually going to run up to 25% because I felt like we weren't getting the full effect of the stages with the stages being as short as they were at most sport. So I'm hoping to see some strategy, some AI kind of going off and on uh, of different strategies, pitting early, pitting late. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this all goes. Uh, you can see I'm running the Sirius XM DLC car from Matt Tift. We're starting from the back. I'm on an Xbox One with an Xbox controller. We're on 105% AI difficulty. And let's get to it. Iowa Speedway. I'm really excited to run this track. So here we come down for the start here at Iowa Speedway. And if I'm not mistaken, this may be the first time in a NASCAR game that we can run Iowa Speedway. It's possible that you could run it in one of the late, 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 late EA games because Iowa Speedway was opened in 2007. But I don't remember it. I never played the kind of later EA games, so I, that's gonna, I'm going to have to leave that, guy, that up to you guys. Uh, but we are running under the lights here at Iowa, which is interesting because I'm pretty sure this is a day race for the Xfinity Series. But apparently not in this game. But uh, the thing I always hear described Iowa Speedway, as, or Iowa Speedway is always described, I should say, as a short track that runs like a super speedway. And you, as you can see, that's pretty much what's happening right now. Whoa, as the 97 really gets uh, rolled up there, and I ran into the back of David Starr. That's Stephen Light down to the inside. I haven't even seen that car. Uh, I ran a race at Mid Ohio for my stream, and I never saw him. So either there's more, oh, and there's a crash. The 01 car, Harrison Rhodes down into the wall on the inside and no caution. So still don't have that worked out, unfortunately. Uh, NASCAR heat. It's tough because it feels like when the player's involved in the crash, it's more likely to bring out the yellow, but the AI crashing generally does not bring out the yellow. But yeah, Harrison Rhodes is having a bad day. We're coming up behind Ben Kennedy, who's running way worse than that two uh, car should be running. Stephen Light's still giving us headaches, so let's see if we can actually get to the inside here. Three wide, and we're hitting the rev limiter into turn number one, so clearly we didn't gear the... Well, I didn't set up the car at all, so the stock gearing uh, will top out uh, at the end of the front straightaway here at Iowa Speedway. As we go four wide, that's not unrealistic. Maybe five wide, six wide. Oh, jeez, Louise, really? That um, that is that is. Um, we were going six wide there for just a second. I can't believe that. As we're gonna try to get to the inside of Ben Kennedy. Not gonna quite make it. Well, there we go to the inside. Just scrape off him a little bit. Scrape off of David Starr. Now diving to the inside. Getting a really good run, but topping the car out down the main straightaway. Can't quite get that run into the corner we'd like to. And now underneath uh, Joey Logano, who's running way too far back. Again, another driver away running way too far back in the back, considering the equipment he has. As we're going to go three wide, Logano tried to make it four wide. We bump into the back of Blake Cook. Dakota Armstrong to the outside. Brandon Jones, is he in relation to Eric Jones? I highly doubt it. We get all the way down next to the yellow line and starting to pass a lot of guys who are running the high line. Clearly that's not working right now. It's, looks like Kevin Harvick struggling up there. 51 car going way underneath Carl Long who is running a pretty amazing 18th right now. So we get on the rev limiter once again here into turn one, just kind of have to lift off early. I guess that's a good way to get me to lift off the gas if I'm just going to hit the rev limiter anyway, you know. So up to 18th, but obviously I'm in one of the better cars in the field, I would say. I do wonder if, oh, when you don't want to run too low, that will spin you out. It won't like, it's not like an instant spin out like NASCAR Heat 1, but 
it isn't it is a spin out if you get down there too low as Harvick makes the move down to the inside in the gas station pizza special but he doesn't manage to pull it off David Starr making it his way to the outside yeah there are definitely a lot of bushwhackers in in uh, in the game as Harvick okay. makes that move pretty easily in the Stuart Haas gas station pizza car but um, there aren't as many uh, in the truck series I don't think Kyle Busch even is featured in the truck series which is interesting I'd, like, I'd actually kind of like to see him added as DLC although I don't think a lot of people would other people so we get down right next to the yellow line and I definitely understeered off of the corner Morgan Shepard making an incredible move down the inside and he is going to take 19th spot for me generally a car that's a start and park is racing for 19th don't know what that says but well, here we go down the back straightaway again in the rev limiter do I have a fifth gear that I don't know about that I'm not using so you just bounce off of Morgan Shepard there now to the inside of Ross Chastain, car all the way on the limiter, all the way down, almost halfway down the straightaway. That's not really in intuitive for a fast lap time, that's for sure. Now to the inside of Eric Almirola, we're coming to the end of the stage as well. As Michael Annette, the threat, is right ahead, making a move down to the inside of not only Kevin Harvick, but also Jeff Green. Is that Jeff Green up there? I think it is. And Annette instantly paid for his uh, crime against... Uh, a couple of Xfinity champions, former Xfinity champions, and now Annette the Threat absolutely slams me going into the corner. Ross Chastain looking to the inside as we're coming to the end of the stage. Nobody pitted. So no crazy strategies just yet as we come off of the final corner for the uh, first time in this stage, and we bring it home 17th uh, in the old 19 Sirius XM car. Uh, is anyone pitting? Uh, there's 48 laps remaining in the race. There's 12 laps left of fuel. Uh, I'm going to take a strategy call. Let's pit early, get on some fresh tires, and see what happens. So we're going to start at the back. Harrison Rhodes just behind us. Uh, but he, of course, was in that involved in that crash. So let's see what happens here. I'm making a bit of a strategy call by pitting early for tires. I wonder if people are going to pit before the start of the stage. We've got 25 laps to go. There's 12 laps remaining in the stage. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pit again right before the end of the stage. So with two laps to go in the stage, I'm going to bring the car down into the pit lane, hopefully not lose a lap. That's why we need to kind of get on it here and see what we can do. Let's try a tr crazy strategy since that's what stage racing is kind of all about, right? As we're in the limiter all the way down the straightaway, literally from the start finish line all the way into turn one, we're on the limiter as we get around or try to get around the Harmonator here. Not in a dodge, unfortunately, no dodges. Because you better believe I would never even leave the Xfinity series if you could run a dodge. But uh, not going to happen as we get all the way down. Really good run down to the inside, and we're going to get underneath Coleslaw Custard. And uh, old Coleslaw is running us pretty hard as Daniel Suarez gets to the inside as well. Oh, and we bump off of Daniel Suarez. Oh, God, no, that's a teammate. And now Coleslaw is getting back to the inside, as well as, like, everybody. The 33 car just got an amazing run down to the inside. Ryan Sieg. I believe that's Ryan Sieg in the 39. Yes, it is. Oh, no. That was close. That was too close for comfort. As Annette the threats to the outside. And I did loosen up the car under the in the pit stop, but clearly we're not as loose as we should be. We're four wide. Thankfully nothing too bad happened to that. On the limiter again. Eight laps to go in the stage, so about six laps till we're gonna come in and take a gamble here. The problem is it's such a short track that it's hard to think that we're going to be able to benefit from going into the pits early. We'll see. Also, I'm pretty sure Ryan... Oh, here we go. Pit stops. You just saw it right there. Pit stops. Looks like Elliott Sadler and maybe a couple other cars. I guess they're banking on a yellow happening before the end of the stage. So they'll get one lap back and they get back on the lead lap. No, everybody's coming in. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Because it looks like... Oh, is 
I've wrecked Carl Long, poor Carl Long, he is just getting no luck and he goes off. And there's just cars pitting all over the place. They're all the way up to 10th, or actually, yeah, we're up to 10th. Morgan Shepard is in ninth. This is an insane race. As we get down to the inside of BJ McLeod, I believe, yes. And to the inside of William Byron. Now there's more cars pitting into the pits. Does that make sense, pitting into the pits? That's, that is English. Whoa, look out. And we're gonna take over the lead here. Okay, so this is working out swimmingly as we get on the limiter all the way down the straightaway. And there's the caution. There is the caution we were looking for. Okay, we got 38 laps remaining, 18 laps in the tank. So let's pit now and see what's gonna happen. So we're restarting in the seventh position. A few cars did not pit. Dakota Armstrong, Ryan Sieg, Ben Kennedy, Morgan Shepard, who is running third. Good job, Morgan. This is not 1989, folks. Do not adjust your TV. Morgan Shepard is running third in a NASCAR race. As Justin Allgaier is up there. And we are on fresh tires. But then again, these guys just pitted. I mean, they pitted right before the caution. And that was not the end of a stage. We're still racing to the end of the stage right now. And we got one lap to go in the stage presented by Credit One Bank. <laughs> and uh, Morgan Shepard is leading. Morgan Shepard is leading. I did not even realize that, but Morgan Shepard. Morgan Shepard. I can't even believe this is happening, but Morgan Shepard is going to win a stage as we wreck Ryan Sieg coming to the line. Morgan Shepard wins a stage at Iowa Speedway. What? 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 Oh my god, I can't even believe that. And we don't even have enough fuel to make it to the end of the race. Well, I guess I'll pit now and just kind of stretch it, hope to stretch it, because we need to repair the damage from absolutely running over Sieg. So I believe Morgan Shepard is still leading this race. There are 29 cars on the lead lap since Brendan Gaughan got his lap back. And we're back underway here at Iowa Speedway. Coming up through the gears. Is Brendan Gaughan in the zero car? No, that's uh, Garrett Smithley. The ticker doesn't update as quick as it does in NASCAR Heat Evolution. I don't know if that's an intentional design choice or just a glitch. Well, as we get four wide, here we go, five wide at Iowa Speedway. Coleslaw Custard was on the outside. He's still on the outside. Look at that bouncing off each other. In NASCAR Heat Evolution, that would have been an absolute for sure crash. But we all managed to make it. Morgan Shepard looks like he's fallen to second. So his reign as the leader is kaput. As I think he stayed out on old tires. And I think he's uh, really starting to feel the effects of that. But look at my new tires as we run into Ryan Sieg once again. Boy, he's going to hate me. Thank God this isn't a career mode race. As we bounce off of Ryan Sieg all the way to the outside, bouncing off of Jeremy Clements. Now to the inside of William Byron, hopefully. Four wide. Jeff Green down to the inside. Daniel Hemrick, we just wrecked Daniel Hemrick, kind of. Oh, Logano down to the inside, nice move. And the Penske's are swarming because Keselowski is down there as well. But Ben Kennedy, again, very slow off of the corner. And he's going to be able to uh, keep everybody behind me. We're gonna drive around the outside. Can we get both the Penske's two for one deal at Kmart? Maybe. Oh, we're all the way on the rev limiter. Man, I love a fifth gear right now. As we still try to work around the outside. Can't quite get there. Logano and Keselowski hanging tough. Down to the inside. Look how much turning Keselowski. Keselowski may have been trying to get in the pits and he couldn't because uh, William Byron was down there. We're on the rev limiter all the way into turn one. So definitely if you're running Iowa Speedway, do a custom setup and set your fourth gear higher. For sure. Morgan Shepard still running second. 
Unbelievable race from him. And now diving to the inside of Joey Logano. We're going to be able to get him hopefully into turn number one. So 24 laps of fuel, or 24 laps remaining, 19 laps of fuel. So we are going to have to pit for a splash and dash. How crazy is this race going to get? As Ray Black Jr. jumping down, trying to get in front of me, can't quite get there. We're going to use him as a bit of a, an aerodynamic device getting turned. Get underneath David Starr, trying to get underneath him anyway. There goes Joey Gase all the way back. The, it's interesting, the AI cars do lose momentum in a car in the wall. It's William Byron and more crashing. Oh, huge problems, a huge wreck. We get caught up in it. And the yellow finally comes out. Holy cow, what a crash that was. So we'll bring her in the pits since everybody else is pitting. And yeah, we'll see what's going to happen. But that was a major, major incident. Okay, so we fall in 28th because we needed to repair our car because of the accident that occurred just in front of us. Looks like Morgan Shepard still running second. Oh, man, if Morgan Shepard wins this freaking race, dude, that is going to be amazing. But we'll get up behind Coleslaw Custer here and see what we can do on the outside. And really run the outside, certainly on, on fresh tires. But once, you, once the tires kind of start wearing a little bit, you've got to get to the bottom because you're not going to make up any time. And it looks like uh, Morgan's starting to lose some time. He's losing time and ground and all sorts of things. As we get up behind Mike Harmon, actually Mike Harmon's to our inside. We're wrecking Brendan gone. Oh, I'm so sorry, Brendan gone. I did not mean to do that, but it turned out that I did do it. And I've damaged the engine. Well, we won't be hitting the rev limiter anymore, that's for certain. So definitely, it seems like the damage is a little bit more intense in this game than it was in Heat Evolution. You definitely aren't rewarded for smashing your way through the field, that is for sure. We get underneath uh, the 86. Uh, don't know who that was because it, he's not on the ticker anymore. He's lost so many positions already. As Harvick dove it down the inside, we're going to do the crossover move on him. Wow, that is that is pretty nice right there. As, uh, Brandon Jones looks to the inside. He can't quite get around. We're on the limiter again. So clearly that engine is not hurting us too badly. But the uh, flex seal cars that always seem to be running together are running together once again. Diving down the inside, try not to spin on that little transition low on the apron. There goes Brandon Jones back through. 15 laps to go on the rev limiter. Whoa! Garrett Smithley, that was the guy who crashed early on in the race. He's struggling. He's on the struggle bus. But, I mean, this is what short track racing is all about. Beating and banging. And running tightly packed bunches like this. And, yeah, Morgan Shepard has definitely fallen through the field. So whatever adjustments they've made over the course of the race to his car has not worked. So we get down here to the inside of Daniel Hemrick. Can we get there? Ty Dillon to the outside, there goes Smithley, but he's not for position, so I really shouldn't be racing him as hard as I am right now. Get on the hard rev limiter down the front straightaway. And Brad Keselowski's having some struggle. He's falling back through the field. Oh, we got a Ty Dillon. He didn't lose it, though. He stuck it. Stuck it together. It looks like Ben Kennedy is that? No, that's David Starr with some issues there. I would like to point out that the Penske car has absolutely no damage at all. That is pretty accurate, to be honest with you. Oh, we got an engine blowing up. Is that Garrett Smithley blowing up? I saw some smoke. I could have sworn I saw that car smoking. As uh, Ben Kennedy gets to the inside, we're going to sneak behind him, try to get to the inside of him. 11 laps to go. As Blake Cook just took an amazing move to the inside. It didn't pull, he didn't pull it off because he's all the way to the outside now. It definitely got loose down there on the bottom. We're going to try to race Morgan Shepard as best we can because Morgan Shepard is one of the next cars we're going to have to pass. 
and he looks like he's struggling as Daniel Suarez just puts an incredible block on Morgan Shepard. It looks like we'll get to the inside of Morgan Shepard. Three wide, Ben Kennedy, four wide for a second. Thankfully, everybody thought better of that one. Boy, I I'll tell you guys, I am loving this. This is some fun stuff. I will say, this. oh no, I'm not gonna be able to say because Daniel Suarez just got taken out by Joey Gase. Absolutely taken out by Joey Gase. Nine laps to go, are we gonna get a yellow? No, we're not, but I will say, I don't like the stages in real life, but they are tailor-made for a video game. Tailor-made for a video game. It's almost like they said, hey, you know what we need to do? We need better NASCAR heat evolution, or heat two sales. So um, we're gonna just make make the real life racing like a video game. So, okay, now I have a choice. And I think I'm gonna repair the car under the yellow because I think I can really make up some time on the restart. This may be a stupid decision, but I'll take tires over track position. All right, so 30th. We got 30 cars to pass here at the end of the race. Looks like the 40 car is in the lead from the distance I'm looking at. We got Coleslaw Custard underneath. William Byron just ahead. He had a bad day. I think he's been in a wreck at some point if I remember correctly. So clearly, I think that yellow was out for Daniel Suarez. He just came out really late. Now let's try to work around the outside. Lots of lanes here at Iowa Speedway. So many lanes, and there you go, on the, on the limiter. Again, that's gonna be uh, the thing. And there's the damaged car of Suarez. He's in trouble. He's falling way back. I'm gonna die to the inside. Well, we're no, no we're not, because I thought it's like, oh, I'll have a really good run. No, I won't because the car is going to be in the rev limiter. So we're going to need Tyler Reddick in the Ganassi car. Now down to the inside of Daniel Hemrick, whose car is looking very torn up as well. Not a lot of cars that aren't torn up here. There's Morgan Shepard to the outside. We're going to make it four wide with Dylan Shepard and gone. Many names from many different eras of NASCAR all racing together. I don't know who is leading the race. Maybe Jeremy Clements in the 51. As we're on the limiter again. Underneath David Starr, who we can't seem to escape from. Underneath Blake Cook, running into Blake Cook, and now off of turn number four across the start finish line. Two laps to go. We're on the limiter again. I guess this is why you run practice, folks, because you need to know whether you're going to be on the rev limiter or not. That means I got a hot rod, man. As we get down into turn number three, get a good run off, hopefully. Mike Harmon running 11th. This is just an unbelievable race. So many small teams in good positions. Now the inside of Dakota Armstrong, now the inside of Ryan Sieg, who wrecked my teammates. So I feel like I should take some, a little bit of revenge. I tried to. Not going to happen. Now into the final corner for the final time. How many positions are we going to be able to make up? Carl Long running up at the front. We're going to run into Carl Long. We're going to ruin Cinderella's run here as we get to the inside and finish eighth. And we just wrecked everybody coming to the line. Ryan Sieg is spinning. Oh, dear. A 101 speed rating. Not amazing. Not amazing. So there you go. Ty Dillon's at the fastest lap of the race. Uh, let's see who else managed to do. Dylan Lupton. The, uh, led 26 laps. I'm guessing he won. There's no result screen, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, I really wish. Also, I'm pretty sure I did way better than going from 25th to 7th. I went from 40th to 8th. But, uh, yeah, I do wish there was a result screen for the single player. Uh, just quick race, but I guess not. So I'm guessing congratulations to Dylan Lupton. Thank you guys so much for watching this race at Iowa Speedway. I think the stage is really really come alive in the 25% races. Uh, that was a very interesting race. And Morgan Shepard won a stage. How crazy is that? So thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more NASCAR Heat 2 action. Uh, I'm going to start the career mode pretty soon. So be on the lookout for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube, and we'll see you in the next video.